Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Recently during the Wano War, we witnessed Luffy reaching an even greater height when it came to his levels of power. Once he acquired his Devil Fruit Awakening and then Awakened Gear 5th, he was then able to defeat one of the most powerful pirates in the world, the former Yonko Kaido. Now it wasn't just Luffy that was able to show great evolution throughout the battle as well as the entire arc of Wano. Many of the Straw Hats have evolved their skills against some of the most powerful pirates in Kaido's organization. Reaching very similar levels potentially to Luffy's. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the possibility that some Straw Hat members are getting close to Yonko level. So we're going to talk about which Straw Hats we think might be close and what indicates their power level is really close to that of a Yonko, or at the very least, a Yonko commander. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that old YouTube algorithm and it keeps motivating us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. Well, without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, after the Wano arc, the Straw Hats emerged not only individually significantly stronger, but a much more powerful crew as a whole. The confrontation with the powerful pirates of Kaido and Big Mom and the intense battles that they fought throughout the country of Wano were crucial milestones in their continued growth as renowned and fearless pirates. Starting with our Straw Hat Captain Luffy, once again, we saw the resilience and ultimate tenacity of Luffy when he had to face off against Kaido multiple times. And this is the Yonko that's considered the most powerful creature in the world, as well as some of his most powerful subordinates. And during the battle, Luffy was also able to awaken the Devil Fruit power, which isn't actually the Gomu Gomu no Mi, but rather the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika. In addition to awakening his mythical Zoan Fruit, Luffy was also able to elevate each of his brands of hockey, and he was able to become much, much stronger. But it was really his ability to Fuse his conqueror's hockey into his attacks that made it possible for Luffy's punches to actually do any damage to a Yonko and even be able to project his attacks internally through the use of Ryo, which he learned in Wano. So all of this added up, and that is what made it possible for Luffy to reach the actual level of a Yonko, finally overcoming the mighty Kaido. Now, as I said at the top of the video, it wasn't just Luffy that managed to evolve during this great battle. Zoro, the talented and determined swordsman of the Straw Hats, also took a leap in power during the Wano War because he too faced off against skilled and ferocious opponents. And Zoro demonstrated not only his enhanced mastery of sword techniques, but he was finally able to combine his impressive physical strength with his newest awakening, his Conqueror's Hockey. In addition to these incredible improvements to his fighting style, Zoro also managed to obtain Enma, a legendary sword that increases its power based on its wielder's hockey level. And this thing cuts through damn near anything. And it's considered an extremely powerful sword that has a great evolutionary capacity because it can become a supreme grade sword. Through these new skills and equipment, Zoro was able to defeat King, a pirate considered extremely powerful and durable. His strength was second only to his captain Kaido, and his bounty was even greater than Katakuri's own bounty, proving to be an extremely powerful opponent. Another character that we saw have a big evolution during these events in Onigashima was Sanji, the skilled cook and agile fighter. And he also had his moment in the spotlight during Wano, facing the challenger page one, where Sanji unveiled an incredible suit, the German raid suit. This technological outfit that had been developed by Germa granted him incredible speed, strength, as well as the ability to use energy techniques just like some of his siblings. And with the raid suit, Sanji became even more formidable in combat, surpassing his previous limits and demonstrating his determination to protect his comrades. But there was also an added twist as Sanji continued to use the suit throughout the battle. Because he'd been using it for a certain amount of time, this caused Sanji's body to awaken the genetic modification that had laid dormant in his body since his birth. And this turned Sanji into an even better fighter with improvements to his speed, strength, and endurance, and even his skills without the need of wearing the Germa suit. So he turned out to have some of the same physical durabilities and even exoskeleton that his siblings showed. And again, all without the raid suit. With these incredible new abilities in his body, Sanji was able to face off against Queen, an extremely skilled scientist and fighter, and is one of the three most powerful pirates in Kaido's crew, being the third. And Queen possessed a bounty just slightly lower than King's, demonstrating that this was a truly powerful pirate. And finally, another straw hat that stood out during this battle was Jimbei, the experienced navigator and helmsman, as well as a master of fishman karate. And he had an extremely important role during the battle that was on Onigashima. Now, Jinbei's entry into the crew brought a new level of strength and strategic skill and even wisdom on the sea. And with Jinbei's own mastery of hockey and his immense stamina, Jinbei has shown his ability to take on some of the toughest challenges and 
furthermore, he drew on his experience as a former warlord to provide valuable guidance and leadership during the battle against Kaido's pirates. In that great battle on Onigashima, Jembe was able to take time and fight Big Mom and actually try to delay her from meeting up with Kaido on the roof. Jembe also took on several pirates from Kaido's crew and even took down Who's Who, who was a former agent of Cypherpole. Taken together, these individual evolutions and advancements solidified the strength and even brought the Straw Hats closer together as a formidable crew. After this Wano arc, we also can expect that they're going to be able to take on even greater challenges and even more powerful opponents. All of their hard training, accumulated experience, and unwavering will to achieve their goals have placed them in a very formidable and advantageous position within the world of One Piece. However, it's important to note that the Straw Hats growth is not going to stop post Wano. Their journey, after all, is going to continue, and it's going to come with new challenges that are going to offer opportunities to further develop their skills and powers, and even allow other members of the crew to shine, because we saw advancements from Nami with her upgrade getting Zeus, Robin, even Frankie, and everyone else had a little bit of shine throughout that battle on Onigashima. So One Piece fans are going to be eager to witness what the future holds for this legendary crew as they continue to grow stronger and become all the more powerful on the seas of One Piece. So now that we're on the other side of this Wano arc, we see that Zoro, Sanji, and Jimbe have gained powers and shown growth that bring them considerably closer to the current Yonko level, and they demonstrate that their growing strength and determination will, in fact, probably take them further. Now, although we don't know Jimbei's full story and how he's grown, because we've only met him since earlier on in our series, we've seen that all of these characters have showed the most consistent and constant growth throughout the series among the Straw Hat crew, and this includes Luffy. Now, while the exact details of how they reach or are close to acquiring that Yonko strength, it may not be fully explained, but we could still look into some aspects that might contribute to their development as fighters. Now, a hallmark of all of these characters is their relentless dedication to training and further honing their skills. And Zoro is especially known for his devotion to the sword, where he trains hard to master advanced swordplay techniques, further developing that special Santoryu or three sword style. As for Sanji, not only is he a master of what we call the black leg style, something he inherited from his adoptive father Zeph, he further continues to perfect his technique and agility in combat. Just think about the fact that Sanji can air walk and do a lot of those same skills that CP0 does. Now Jinbei, of course, is a fishman karate master, and he's constantly expanding his experience in the depths of the ocean. And all three of them show a commitment to training that sets them on a path to reach levels of power comparable, if not beyond, that of any of our current Yonko. Another extremely important point to make as well is the fact that Zoro, Sanji, and Jinbei, along with Luffy, occupy the higher tier fighters on the crew. So they, throughout their journeys, are going to be getting exposed to increasingly more difficult challenges. And they are going to be the ones that are going to have to be on the front lines facing off against those powerful opponents. And each time, as they come across greater and greater difficulty, this again is going to allow them that chance to overcome their physical and mental limits. As we've seen, each battle that we've witnessed in our story, these not only strengthen the stamina and physical endurance of a character, but also allows them to learn from each encounter and develop more effective strategies and add things to their toolkit, which improve their fighting skills overall. These three characters also show a unique determination and mental strength that are equally fundamental to their growth, because each is going to want to go after their goals and also see that their crewmates achieve their dreams as well, because after all, this is their family. Including Luffy, each of these fighters is known for their perseverance and refusal to give up regardless of adversity. This never surrender mentality is what gives them the edge during these intense battles, and also has allowed them to face even more formidable opponents with courage, determination, and always seeing that fight through to the end. And if you really think about it, each of their personalities kind of resembles Luffy's, or at least a part of it. Now, although these four characters are really totally different in their way of thinking, acting, and even fighting, they all share that same love, that determination, that ferocity during combat that gives them everything that they need to overcome their limits and win against their opponent at all costs. Moreover, each of them has shown a desire for combat constant knowledge and learning to improve their craft. And this is especially shared by Zoro, Sanji, and Jimbe. And if you think about it, Luffy truly embodies it because who would have ever thought what he could do with this silly rubber fruit? So each of them has always been looking for ways to improve their combat skills. Now this could be intense physical training, studying advanced techniques, and even just learning from more experienced fighters. But this relentless pursuit of improvement is essential for each of their development as fighters as they approach and even exceed that level of a Yonko, because we have to know
know that they are gonna face off against things that are even stronger and scarier than a Yonko. And finally, another contributing factor, which I would argue would be the most important factor to these characters' growth, is their drive to protect their friends and achieve their goals, and especially see their friends achieve their goals and dreams. I mean, even though we know that there is this awful rivalry between Soro and Sanji, they truly are brothers and want to see each other succeed. Sanji would do anything to make sure that Zoro has the opportunity to become the greatest swordsman in the world. Just like Zoro would cut down any obstacle that would keep Sanji from seeing the all blue. So in a nutshell, these three pirates, as well as their captain Luffy, have stood out as notable fighters throughout our story of One Piece. And through their relentless dedication to training, always looking for more challenging battles, and continuing to strive for improvement, they truly are the closest thing we have on the crew to Yonko level, if not just a little bit shy. So that means that in the future, they're going to be not only as strong as a Yonko, but they'll be able to exceed it. Because as I just said, there has to be some something more challenging than a Yonko out there. Luffy and company can't just keep rolling up on new islands now and just, oh, well, we can beat anybody in our path. There has to be the stakes always raised, and Oda has surely got some things waiting in the wings that he's been sitting on for possibly decades that are gonna show us even greater heights from our favorite fighters. And never forget what awaits our crew and their other cohorts when they arrive at the final end of our story. There is gonna be this grand epic battle. The thing that Oda has promised will make Marineford look like a little just nothing. A battle that will truly decide the fate of the One Piece world. But through this great strength and the support of their other crewmates, because I don't want to dismiss any of the other Straw Hats, they each have a pivotal role to play. This crew, though, could become the most powerful crew in the world and surpass possibly even the Rocks Pirates and make the Straw Hats as a group the most legendary pirates in the One Piece world. So with all that said, my friends, we'd now love to know what you think about it. First and foremost, what's your opinion? Luffy might be as strong as a Yonko, albeit maybe not as strong as Shanks, but what do you think about our other three? How close do you think they are? Are they at least Yonko Commander level, or are they pretty close? Also, what do you think it would take? What additional growth would we like to see in these fighters that would make you truly feel that they are Yonko level? Let us know what you think about that in the comments below. So as we wrap up our video for the day, we'd like to thank you all so much for watching, especially those of you who've made it here to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, hit that subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you all in our next video. Let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.